Are you ready for some before the paywall? Indeed. So, you want nuts, Andrew? I would love some nuts, thank you. Let's get nuts then. Preferably pecans, peanuts, cashews. I'm a cashew man myself. How about right, you? I'll get you some cashews. <laughs> uh, I like almonds. Really? I like pecans, actually. Pecans Both are good. You yeah. know, welcome to Peanut Talk, everybody. Yes. <laughs> so, welcome. yeah, the flesh. Fresh trailer has been out this past week, and I'm sure you guys have been waiting for us to comb through it and look for Easter eggs and connections. And that's what we're going to do for this uh, Patreon preview for everybody. So, obviously, uh, we get to see a lot more of the Keaton Batman in this one, but also get to see Keaton's Bruce Wayne. We didn't really get to see much of him at all um, outside of the mask in the previous trailers. So, uh, he doesn't have the mask this time, both here and in this shot, when he's talking to Barry in the opening monologue about wishing he could bring his own parents back. And uh, I think we talked about this with our monthly meetup guys, but the monologue here really sells it. You know, like it's, it really brings together the emotion of this movie. Yeah, uh, it was unfortunate timing. It was like the worst timing for this trailer. So apologies for that. I'm probably people think we're le really late on this, but um, we recorded this on Mondays and this came out on Tuesdays. So, <laughs> so we we're kind of a week late, but yeah, this it, it kind of felt like it, this was a, uh, like going to be a Batman movie because it's so much Bruce Wayne. I mean, for a trailer, you know, for two minutes mm -hmm. of two minute trailer, we have a whole 30 second intro or more of Batman. It's kind of a lot. And then, it, you know, it brings it back around to the emotional core and their emotional connection between each other mm -hmm. uh, regarding, you know, bringing parents back from the dead. Uh, just really well done. And it seems to be, you know, it's not just going to be an action spectacle, you know, yeah. it, it's going to actually have, it's going to be an action spectacle, but below that it has the emotional core that um, really um, is what makes these movies, um, you know, better than most, I'd say, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I think it's, it hints at a lot of stuff and it's also something where it really deepens more of Keaton's character from what we we've seen. Cause he's such a mysterious character in, in 89 and returns. And <laughs> yes. uh, you don't know what's going on behind his eyes. And here we <laughs> have some, movies. yeah, we got some vulnerability here um, that we saw, you know, with Selena at the end of, of returns and with some scenes with Vicky Vale in 89, but it's a different type of thing here. Uh, and uh, it really shows that like, Hey, you couldn't, you wouldn't get this if this was the Thomas Wayne, Batman, you know, Thomas Wayne's Batman didn't lose his parents. Uh, he lost his he lost his kid in the Flashpoint comic. But, you know, there, there's a connection here about losing specifically losing parents uh, here that uh, I think they were smart to lean into. So uh, that's that great, good, especially especially when 89 was the first time we saw the uh, the Wayne murders dramatized in live action. So yes. it's been sticking with us for, you know, over 30 years or so. So. Uh, that was good here. And uh, during this monologue, we see a whole bunch of stuff that's been going on. We see Bruce's hand over an old photo of him and his parents, which was in like a previous trailer. But I think it's even more um, hinted at here that it is uh, Bruce Wayne's hand, more or less. But pretty much, yeah. So this looks very similar to the family portrait in the Batman 89 comic, though uh, that one is an unfinished painting rather than a photo. Uh, but right. kind of a similar composition here uh, with everybody. And uh, eagle-eyed viewers will also note that the actors here look a little different from the ones in 89 who were David Baxt as Thomas Wayne, Sharon Holm as Martha Wayne, and Charles Roskilly as young Bruce Wayne. Uh, we did a whole deep dive on our Patreon on these actors because, you know, we got we, we, we go as deep as we can with 89. But, uh, yeah, it's pretty evident that the Waynes look different, but it makes sense. Like, you can't bring back these actors now to recreate this today and expect them to look the same, especially Charles Roskilly. He's no longer a little kid. So you either do a <laughs> shit ton of Photoshop for continuity reasons, or you make it easy on yourself and just get new actors and just chalk it up to Barry messing with the timeline. It's just not going to be the kind of thing that ruins the movie. And I mean, it's, it might hint that it's like not the Burton verse that we know it's a different Bur Burton verse because the multiverse is truly infinite. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, it could be that. And even if it is that, that won't like ruin the movie. So yeah, no one should be, are people losing their heads over this? Nah, it's just something I wanted okay. to, to point out. Okay. Um, okay. I got but, it. But if they are, <laughs> let us know. But I haven't seen uh, much on that one. 
Uh, again, I don't think a lot of people were paying that much attention to how Thomas and Martha and, and Bruce look like in the flashback in 89. And I'd say the actors they picked were close enough, you know, in the, in that photo. You just need them for like a two second shot, you know, of, of his hand over it. And then that's it. Like what we saw in the trailer is probably as much as we're going to see it in the movie. OK, so um, it does look like there's some sort of bat cave entrance from the bookshelf in that shot where. Um, you know, we see the bookcase open and there's the bat suits there, but, uh, I don't know if that's like just the opening of the bat cave and beyond that is the bat cave, or if he just randomly has the vault in his study or something, uh, or all that stuff is actually in the bat cave and that's how you open the vault, but we'll find out, uh, in June, no matter the case. But, uh, we also get to see Keaton's bat computer during this time. It looks like it's been upgraded uh, this is clearly his and not Affleck's because if you look at the top two monitors on the left and the right, uh, you get to see the design for the Batwing uh, as well as the design for his bat suit on the top right. So this is his bat cave. Uh, this is his bat computer. Plus, it's also in the trailer when he's talking. So it'd be a little weird if it was Affleck stuff. <laughs> it's just, they don't meet, do they? Maybe they don't meet, huh? That'd be kind of cool if they did, but but I don't think it's going to happen. Yeah. We'll see. Uh, or maybe that's one of the, the surprises. But again, we, we did not go to CinemaCon, uh, so we have not seen this movie. So anything that we say here should not be taken as like spoiler territory. We're just analyzing what's in the trailer. Uh, we don't that, own a movie theater. Yeah. So uh, this is Keaton's back computer. And if you look at the chair, he seems to have the same type of chair as he did in 89, uh, right with the same sort of uh, headrest type of thing. So uh, but he's clearly upgraded his monitors since 89, which makes sense, of course. So, but that was kind of a cool little detail. When you have a, kept. when you have a good chair, you know, you just got to <laughs> keep it. Yeah. Leather might be worn, more worn down after, you know, the past 30 plus years, but it's still good. Uh, but yeah, another major thing he's upgraded was the thing that we talked about in the main episode this week, which was the Batwing. Uh, it was destroyed in the 89 film. So, of course, he had to upgrade it. And uh, like we talked about on the main show, it seems like the Batwing is finally getting uh, as much of a showcase, if not more, uh, in a Batman film uh, than it did in 89. Like we said before, like all the other times, it's kind of not really been given much of a showcase. But here, it's it's the main showcase in terms of Batman vehicles in the trailers. We only really see the Batmobile sitting in the Batcave, at least so far. Maybe it shows up in a scene we haven't seen any footage of. Uh, I'd like to think so. Since if you're going to put, you know, the greatest Batmobile ever in the movie, you should have him at least take him out again for one last ride. But uh, we get the Batwing in this one. We see it in the Batcave for the first time, uh, which we didn't get to see in 89. And it's also hanging upside down, which is something that we saw in Batman Forever. Which I think is a cool detail. That's one of the cool parts of the, the Batwing in Batman Forever. I think you commented on that too, uh, on that being cool. Yeah. So... Uh, that's a cool detail, but, uh, other upgrades, it looks like the bat wing wings fold out, uh, as it's coming out. And, uh, we also see stuff that we saw in previous trailers where it looks like Keaton's bat cave has a waterfall outside the entrance, kind of like Bales did in the dark Knight trilogy. So, uh, kind of another upgrade here. Uh, this bat wing also seems to be able to show occupants or allow it to shift outside of the plane, which is what we see with Batman and the two berries before Barry asked Batman where his parachutes are. Uh, hmm. So that's a cool shot. But uh, yeah, it does look like the Batwing at some point gets attacked in the trailer by a Kryptonian who looks like Namek from Man of Steel. Namek did a similar thing of jumping onto planes and uh, attacking them and killing the pilots in Man of Steel. But it looks like Keaton does use his, uh, his glider cape to escape the same fate as everyone else. But like all the others, I'm pretty sure the Batwing is going to get destroyed again in this since that uh, you know good that shot in man of steel is like he kills the guy it like crushes him or something but it's yeah. kind of far away from frame from the from the camera too quick. yeah unless you're like it's very it. quick yeah. yeah like i i don't i remember you telling me that and i had seen man of steel you know several several times and i hadn't really noticed that it's pretty gruesome it probably wouldn't have it probably wouldn't have gotten a pg-13 if that had been close closer yeah, no, you know, for sure. That's was, that's was, that was pretty cool. Pretty cool little like uh, touch that Snyder did there, and to see that kind of happen again, like to see the Flash kind of invade Man of Steel 
this is wild for me man because oh, man yeah. we talked about on this podcast before go back in the archives if you don't know but like man of steel was kind of a big movie for me personally for some strange reason and um to kind of see you know this movie revisit and kind of invade that space i think it's it's cool and it's just it's to me it's wild it's just wild to see all this oh yeah like yeah i would never have guessed years ago they're like keaton's gonna come back and he's going to fight the Man of Steel Kryptonians. I'm just like, Keaton, that just sounds like fan Keaton, fiction. You see this <laughs> desert scene in Man of Steel? Yeah, Ke- Keaton's going to be in that fucking shit. <laughs> All right, get back on your meds, motherfucker. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's like, you know? no, this is actually happening. <laughs> so yeah. I don't know what Miss was on, but we need that shit. Hodson, not Mahodson too, right? Or Hodson too, yeah, yeah. Uh, so yeah, we got this shot here where it looks like the Batwing is a goner, just like all the other Batwings in live action, like we talked about before. This thing always gets destroyed. Uh, the Batwing so, is just not see. long for this world, bro. You know, <laughs> he makes it be expendable. Yeah, uh, the Batmobiles kind of have more lasting power, but uh, the Batwings not so much. So looks like he's going to lose it at some point uh, in this, based off of what we see here in the trailer, because no one else is flying that plane uh, after he jumps out. At least I don't think so. So. Uh, this is a cool shot. Another shot that's cool with him with his uh, cape out is this one, where it looks like he's upgraded the bulletproof capabilities in the suit. If you remember in the Burton films, whenever he got shot, he usually, I mean, maybe some of it was him acting, but he usually got fell to the ground. In 89, it happens uh, twice. In returns, it happens when the police open fire on him and he falls to the other floor. But here, 70 plus Bruce Wayne is able to take it just by like swinging his cape out and stuff. So uh that's cool in terms of kevlar super light kevlar cape bro i mean why not and it's just cool to see batman actively saving people like this it's a it's a really great image you know i mean yeah i think it's great it looks it just looks cool it's it was it's a great little shot we see in this trailer yeah for sure uh i think it it's one of those things i had to go back and just like wait does does he do what i think he does and i I look back and i'm like oh yeah he does because it's so, so short of a time in the trailer but yeah 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 it's there it's there uh this next one comes from our fan spark again uh what's up spark again it's been <laughs> a while uh he said say i know this the video he was commenting on was seven months old but he says i say i know this is seven months old but i know something after seeing the flash trailer i caught on the barry's uh flash 89 costume resembles not only the batman returns armor suit but it looks just like robin's costume for the batman 89 comic if you compare the uh, the ab area in young barry's uh, suit with Robins in the 89 comic, you can see it's pretty much the Batman Returns uh, layout, both painted red over here, which is oh, an yeah, he's connection. this. Look, this is going to be a comedic beat in the movie. I mean, there's look at look at his cowl <laughs> like that's they, he's cut off the ears, dude, like to make a makeshift flash suit. I mean, this yeah. is this is this is the return suit painted Mus- Muschetti <laughs> like tweeted this out too mm-hmm. you know so i mean yeah i don't think this is this is like a kind of the worst kept secret um which is cool though you know I, it's gonna it's gonna be played for comedy it's gonna be fine it's cool that this, there's a connection to this robin too with that suit this this robin suit rules by the way it's yeah. like the best one <laughs> yeah it's pretty fucking awesome i think uh it's kind of a cool connection i don't think it was intentional uh that like muschetti and christina hodson is having uh, young Barry in a makeshift returns costume that's been made for him while Sam Hamm and Joe Quinones had a makeshift sort of Batman returns costume modified for the Drake Winston Robin. So looks like Keaton just likes passing that suit along to his protégés. <laughs> seems to be a thing. I guess so. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, that's cool. And then the last shot I want to bring up involving the Keaton Batman is this one where I'm like, is Keaton's Batman kneeling before Zod? I don't know. He's kneeling. Oh we'll my see. God. I have not even thought about that. So, uh, I mean, it, it could, or he's just tired from having gotten, you know, attacked by Namek and ejected from the, the bat wing and he just landed afterwards and he needs a breather because he's fucking 70. I don't know. But uh, it's, it could be, a, it was an intriguing shot uh, that I saw here with him on his knees, which is not what you're used to seeing. So I don't know what the context is behind this. Uh, but uh, it's also weird seeing Keaton's Batman during the day as well. <laughs> That's true, man. It's like mostly during the day. Yeah. Uh, but it almost happened 
in Batman 89. We almost got to see Keaton's Batman during the day. It was in the shooting draft with rewrites by Warren Skarin, the guy we keep saying, God damn it, <laughs> as he's snorting oh, cocaine. And that's the, the guy that... Writer. That's the guy that had to write the let's get nuts scene on the fly, right? <laughs> right, yeah. Um, he had a whole action sequence between Batman and Joker after that let's get nuts apartment scene. Uh, that was cut. That would have been Batman showing up during the day to save uh, Vicky and the mayor from the Joker. And you can check out our coverage on our episode in the Batman 89 novelization where we went into a little bit more detail on, on that sequence. But uh, yeah, Muschietti gets to bring an idea to life that uh, Warren Skarin wrote in many, many years ago. So, uh, which is the Keaton Batman during the day in daylight. So uh, it's pretty cool. But that's pretty much what I nice. got in terms of the Easter eggs and the Keaton stuff. Outside of that, it's just a good trailer. You know? Yes. It's just solid. It's um, a it's I, a fucking great trailer. I mean, uh, you know, I feel like Muschietti is going to do to the DCU what the Russo brothers did to marvel just kind of in, inject all the right juice into it mm -hmm. uh it, it's just it, you can just it seems like everybody's kind of on the same page everything is really good about this trailer there's not much not much wrong with it uh mm -hmm. you know all the designs the look of it it looks fun it's funny it's got the emotional beats that are really really strong mm -hmm. um you know like for example, another trailer that came out recently, it was the Rise of the Beast Transformers one. Mm -hmm. Like, dude, and this sort of relates because Hodson wrote Bumblebee, which was a great movie. And look, I haven't seen Rise of the Beast yet. I don't think Hodson wrote it. But you look at that trailer, yeah. it's like there's no emotional anything in it at all. It's totally... Mm -hmm. I don't know if it'll be... It, probably, it looks like a little better than the Michael Bay ones. I, I fucking hate those. But mm -hmm. the... You know, we got something really great with with hodson's bumblebee and just comparing you know like you like this is in the trailer on front street they're not hiding it in, in mm -hmm. flesh they this emotional core is totally there yeah. and uh it's it's going to be a big part and make it make it heavy when it needs to be heavy you know and uh all the designs are great i mean this is like dude this is like this movie is going it, it's really everything about it is kind of feels like it's for me <laughs> 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 you know that you know we talked about this i didn't really love snyder's designs and for his some of his movies and stuff like that and but like i like all the designs in this one and i love that zod's back and uh you know the supergirl looks great her suit looks great you know every mm -hmm. the batwing looks great um, the the flash action the flash action looks like it's going to be awesome uh you know it, it's just there's only one thing that that's like a very minor gripe and it's zod's line this planet must die <laughs> it's just like <laughs> come, come on we don't have a better line here <laughs> there's, yeah. there's got to be a better line here uh other just, yeah that's uh, real quick i just i have a feeling he's just not going to have because he's not the, like that major of a part, it seems, compared to Man of Steel. But I just don't think he's going to have the iconic moments that he kind of had in Man of Steel. With the, I will find him or the, you know, on a farm or that type of stuff. I just think he's going to, maybe I'm wrong. I just think he's just kind of going to just be there. Yeah. I could be wrong on that. I No, I think it's going to, I mean, he's obviously going to have like a, made, be part of some major action sequences, but uh just man dude his, his lot that line and it's not doesn't ruin it or anything but that is literally the only thing that gave me a little bit of pause mm -hmm. from just the dialogue the look everything great love michael shannon he's awesome um but uh i don't know I, i'm a stickler for dialogue too i think but but anyway um a lot i mean dude i fucking love this trailer this is this is this is my most look forward to movie this whole year same. This entire fucking year. I've told my wife already. I've like preparing her, you know, like a month in advance. Like <laughs> this it's coming up. It's coming there's, up. There is no uh, question that we're not seeing this movie immediately. Uh, you know, I try to <laughs> try to make it very clear, show the trailer, get her prepared. She's into it. And I, lately I try to only bring her to the really good ones. Mm -hmm. um, she, she likes it when they're, when they're, when they're good, you know, but she, uh, 
<laughs> like I, you know, I didn't bring her to Shang Chi. I didn't bring her to Ant Man. <laughs> you right. know, I didn't, I didn't bring her to Love and Thunder. You know, but I'm like, I'm, I want her to kind of stay liking these movies. So I only, mm. <laughs> I don't want her to go through fatigue. So gotcha. like, you know, I'm gonna watch all of them, but you're, I, you know, I'm gonna the ones we watch together in the theater. I'm gonna make sure they're fucking bangers. Nice. Like, like this one's more than likely going to be so um yeah if this, you get hooked up with a preview screening even better yeah this dude, this trailer fucking rules dude everything about it. i felt like my a little kid again yeah watching Definitely. it like getting super hyped for a movie again um and i love you know i love that keaton's bringing people to the flash i'm i'm excited to you know despite all the stories with Ezra Miller and stuff, I still, as a character, at least, I want to see what happens with the Flash and Barry. Yeah. Okay? I'll say it like mm -hmm. that. All right? Um, but, yeah, so enough for me. What about you? I'm sure you you love every second of it. That's just like I do, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, look, there, there's some there's some CG that still clearly needs to be worked on, and I don't know how much they will between now and when the movie comes out. But outside of that, like, it's the only thing that bumped me on it. Other than that, like, the Keaton monologue, of course, was fantastic. It really sets yes. up that, like, yes. hey, like, we're going to deepen more of the Keaton Batman character, uh, while at the same time, like, this is still Barry's story. Everybody in this, even though, like, yeah, it might seem like it's a nostalgia fest with Keaton or a cameo fest with the Kryptonian and stuff, like, it revolves around Barry's story. Still, kind yes. of like how yes, um, yes, you know, yes, No yes. Way Home was still revolved around Tom Holland's Spider-Man, despite the fact there were, like, 20 million people uh, in, in the cast for that and yet they still managed to make that about tom holland's peter to the point where like his the entire emotional arc in the in the finale is all on him um despite you know cameo of a million people before that and i think we're in for something similar for this where it's going to be based purely on barry and and somebody who just didn't want his parents to die and having to face the consequences of of trying to do that with you know another character batman um trying to to help him be that because he he gets something that uh bruce never got to have and there's something really emotional and powerful uh about that and i'm excited about the idea of of what new insights could come up in in keaton's batman in this one because i think i told you before where i'm like like yeah like, like there was kind of a concern of like is this going to ruin his batman but when i'm watching more of this i'm just like well what i didn't consider is this is this going to even make his batman even better We'll see. Yeah. Um, again, like there's a lot of hype for this, and I'm sure a lot of it we're going to watch and we'll be like, well, I don't know if it's that good. It's good, but I don't know if it's that good um, as a response to some of the, the reception. But the reception was just fucking out of this world with the, with the, the, the I, Twitter reactions and shit. Like it's I'm like, dude, this is going to be something special. It's just a little bit like too good. Like, oh, my yeah. God, is this like I, I'm kind of I want to take from my expectations a, a little bit here. Same uh just because people are acting like this is like the jesus come back in superhero form man it's it's like this i haven't seen hype like this in a long time man yeah like if this brings you the feels like mm, like on the level of top gun maverick or something that'd mm -hmm. be or somewhere around there i guess it'd be that'd be that'd be cool but it's just it seems like the hype is even beyond that in some way Apparently just, even tom cruise agrees <laughs> If the Tom Cruise is to pee, that's, that's true. Hodson, <laughs> man, Hodson wrote a fucking banger here. It really feels like so. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I could see why Gun's like, don't go anywhere. <laughs> I'm gonna put your ass right in the bullpen. Yeah. <laughs> right, the rest of these fucking movies. Um, and then, I love the response from Feige too. That the, Feige has been restructuring the fuck out of Marvel. It seems like. Mm -hmm. Like they're they're trying to like brace for the storm that's about to happen because DC is about to come back in a really fucking yep. strong way, and mm -hmm. uh, you know they're talking about getting like actual directors for for well I don't want to say that uh, directors that have more prestige than the ones that they've been getting so far mm -hmm. for some of the films and you know it's cool that they give uh um you know up and comer directors a Marvel film which is awesome but I can see wanting to handle the competition more now that they're going to actually have competition thanks to gun yeah uh you know they kind of have to restructure and on top of that not just the directors but the vfx people you know 
going to mutiny here soon. Probably, I don't know why they haven't been on strike, to be honest with you. But uh, so, so yeah. Anyway, uh, this trailer, dude, looks looks excellent. All the trailers have been great. The Japanese trailer is a totally different tone, mm-hmm. um, but it's 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 good too. I kind of wish I hadn't seen it because it's like so much extra footage. But yeah, um, I you know I wanted to see how they market to Japan, which is always interesting to me. Um, uh, but yeah, man, it does to me, to me, this is kind of it, you know, yeah. like, I don't know why it goes downhill it's, after this. <laughs> it's kind of, it's kind of spelled out at this point. You got, you got, you know what the good ones are, mm-hmm. you know, just do this again. <laughs> <laughs> make, make Green Lantern, you know, like this, <laughs> or you know, some shit like that. Uh, but, uh, the Green Lantern seems like it'll be darker actually with the true detective thing you said anyway, but anyway, yeah. um, but uh yeah dude looking just so much so forward to this it looks like such a such a treat oh yeah yeah uh, it's it's the movie of the year that we're looking forward to and and uh, apparently people who saw it seem to say that that's what it is so uh fingers crossed you know we'll see fingers what happens fingers crossed man everybody taper your expectations a little bit but <laughs> yeah you could probably probably expect a good one it'll probably be pretty mm-hmm. good you know yeah let's For let's sure. do it all right so that is it for the uh, for the public part and stuff, but uh, if you want to hear more, we're going to dive into more of the uh, sort of the news roundup, certain things that were uh, kind of talked about about the movie, as well as um, you know certain insights from Zack Snyder himself in this past uh, SnyderCon and stuff. So uh, we'll talk about that on the five dollar Patreon tier if you're a part of that, and uh, we'll see you there. Patreon.com/slash superhero stuff pod link in the description. These episodes are at the five dollar tier mark, so uh, we're going over and behind the paywall now, and uh, we'll see you there.